I am experimenting talking without PowerPoints. So please walk with me as we deep dive into some fundamental aspects of kinematic alignment. Kinematic alignment is about true resurfacing of the joint, considering the anatomic variations of that particular patient and the ligament laxity of that particular patient. That's the difference between kinematic and mechanical alignment. And unlike mechanical alignment, which tends to make both gaps equal in flexion and extension by making the ligaments isometric, kinematic alignment tends to mimic the unique ligament laxity of that particular patient and understand that ligaments are not isometric. They are tighter in extension, little lax in flexion and the lateral complex being lax throughout the range of motion. And kinematic alignment aims to respect that fundamental nature of ligaments. Now there are five fundamental points, cardinal features of kinematic alignment that we all need to consider. Fundamental one, whenever we're taking a distal femur cut, take into consideration the loss of cartilage. So just don't go blindly and cut 9 millimeters from the lost medial side. That means you're cutting 11 millimeters and 1 millimeter of saw curve. So practically you're cutting 12 millimeters of bone if you're cutting 9 millimeters from the bone cartilage. So cut 6 millimeters from the bone cartilage, the medial side, in a standard varus knee. Plus 2 millimeters of lost cartilage plus 1 millimeter of saw curve. That's 9 millimeters. So be very particular of your distal femur cut which should be 6 millimeters from the bone side. Second important point of this first fundamental is the flexion of the femur component which should be at 3 degrees. Because if it is more, you will tighten up the extension space and cause fixed flexion deformity. And that is where technology comes in very handy. In the sagittal plane of the femur component, in keeping the flexion of the femur component at 3 degrees. When you're cutting with a saw, usually your flexion of the femur component increases and that leads to fixed flexion deformity. Fundamental two of kinematic alignment is to rotate three degrees considering the cartilage loss on the posterior medial side. So if you have full thickness cartilage loss of the posterior medial side, you have to rotate to zero degrees and cut equally from the lateral and the medial posterior side. What that means is that you are not externally rotating too much based on trans epicondylar axis but you are rotating 3 degrees PCA considering the lost cartilage. So you have to uh, take a 0 degree rotation if you have full thickness cartilage loss on the medial side. That's fundamental 2. Fundamental 3 is to centralize the femur and not lateralize the femur. Because when you lateralize the femur too much, you are tightening in the lateral retinaculum and that leads to increase incidence of lateral release in mechanical alignment which is significantly reduced in kinematic alignment because you are respecting the rotation, you are trying to reproduce the trochlea and centralize the femur. Coming to the tibia cut, your tibia cut has to be in 2 or 3 degree varus. So normally in mechanical alignment you cut perpendicular to the mechanical axis, here you don't. You take 3 or 4 millimeters from the medial side plus 2-3 millimeters of loss of cartilage. So your tibial cut is not the way you cut in mechanical alignment but 2-3 to three millimeters from the medial side and almost equal when you consider the cartilage loss from both the sides. So your cut is in 2-3 to three degree varnish. Now why do you do that? To reproduce the slightly oblique joint line and minimize or eliminate soft tissue releases. That brings us to fundamental 5 of kinematic alignment that is to eliminate uh, soft tissue releases. So you don't go past the midline. You don't even see the posterior medial corner in at least 60% of your normal virus knees. Because when you do the tibia first and you release up to the posterior medial corner, you, you induce certain soft tissue instability patterns which are very subtle in extension especially the patient feels unstable while walking or feels unstable when going up and down stairs, that is flexion instability. They are very subtle instability patterns. So, these are five fundamentals of kinematic alignment. Let me sum them up again for you. Respect the cartilage loss on the distal femur side, cut 6 millimeters from the lost cartilage, rotate 0 degrees considering the loss of posterior medial cartilage, centralize the femur, 
cut your tibia in 2 to 3 degrees of varus and eliminate or minimize soft tissue releases. Now, what are the cases that can undergo kinematic alignment? Almost 60% of your cases, normal varus knees under 10 to 15 degrees and 5 degrees of sagittal plane deformity can be considered for kinematic alignment. You don't need to draw these complex angles, MPTA, LDFA in every case if you don't have the ability. But you all have the ability to resurface the knee harmoniously the way has been described uh, by in kinematic alignment. Now, valgus cases, extra articular cases, post hyatical osteotomy cases are not the cases for kinematic alignment. So, 60% pure kinematic, 20% restricted kinematic as described by earlier speakers, and 10% fall outside the ambit of kinematic alignment. And I hope I have ignited some curiosity, creativity into you to aim for the final frontier of the forgotten knee of most of our patients. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Ramadan. That was a nice talk. You didn't go to the slide. Now it's my proud privilege to